Hi everyone, this is Bethany Be a Crafty Girl, and this is my Girl Talk Girl Talk series Crafty Friday video number three. And I had asked in my previous video if anyone had any ideas what I should do for my Crafty Talk video. So this is going to be like subscriber comments answered. So the first thing I'm going to show is I went back to Mangelson's yesterday and got the stamp set and um, Carol, who is one happy crafty chick, she said to make sure that I showed the stamp set, that it looked cool. So I got the stamp set. It was 99 cents. It is from We Are Memory Keepers. And this is what it is. It is very cute. It's from the Love to Craft line and it, you. this is all one stamp and the on is one stamp so you stamp that. And then you can put all of these little words in the blank. So keep calm and knit on, draw on, sew on, paint on, craft on, and carry on. I wish there was one that said stamp. That would be cool. But anyway, I got this. I'm so excited. And I got an extra one. Woo! So this might be in a giveaway. And then I got a couple other things. I was running out of my Tombow Mono Multi, so I picked another one of those up. And then I didn't bring any blings with me, and I worked on paper piecing a stamp. I don't know where it went, but um, I wanted some blings for the flowers. So I got these little blings, and these little blings, and then these big blings. And then at that store they had like the meshy bling, so I got it in aqua. So I picked that up too. This was... Not as cheap as I could have gotten it online, but I was there and it was there and that's cool. So I showed you that haul because there were people that said keep the hauls coming. So I showed you my little haul. And there was several people that said they were very excited to see my paper tray and claw in my um, paper smooches haul that I did from their website. So I will uh, show that later. Also, um... If you are watching Stephanie D2, I got your rack, and uh, I will do a video on that too. Thank you very much. So anyway, so, oh, there's that paper piece thing. So I was going to put the blings in the middle of the flowers, and then put this on a card. And then I had another question from Molly Tigger, and, hi Molly Tigger, and she's a new subscriber, and she's new to... Um, rubber stamping and crafting them and stuff and she asked me on my last video what is the difference between clings clear stamps etc I am new at, to this and not quite sure so I would be happy to answer that question and then there's also uh, other people have done videos about different kinds of stamps too so I pulled some stamps that I just have here um, of course there's the wood mountain stamps which are you know what was probably around first uh, this is a cling stamp right here, and cling stamps are just like wood mounted stamps, only they don't come on the wood. So uh, you get a clear block that you would use with your clear stamps, and uh, they're called cling stamps because you just press and they cling, and they stick to the block and then you can use it. If you get really big cling stamps, you don't have to have a block necessarily, you can just lie it down and press your paper onto it. So that's a cling stamp. It is still made of rubber like a wood mounted stamp but it's on cling so that it, it so that it clings or sticks to a block. So that is a cling stamp and I think the the biggest selling point on cling stamps is that they're just easier to store because there's not that wood block on them. But they're made out of red rubber. And then there's two types of clear stamps and I'll show you this one again. This is one type of clear stamp and it's just made out of ac acrylic. So um, it's just made out of a acrylic plastic. So the thing you have to watch with these type of clear stamps is that um, the ink might uh, bead up on you and you might not get as great of an impression. To help with that, if um, you're having really hard problems with a stamp that's made out of uh, this acrylic, this cheaper plastic, is you can file it off with a little nail file first and it, and it kind of roughs it up and helps you um, get good ink on there. 
And then there's another type of clear stamp, paper smooches and lawn fawn and paper tray ink. They are all photopolymer stamps. And see that it says it right there, photopolymer stamps. Photopolymer is uh, a little better quality than just the regular acrylic clear stamps. So you don't have the problem as much with the beading up of the ink and you get a nice impression every time. Also with these just clear acrylic stamps, you have to be really careful how hard you press because it might distort uh, the image. With photopolymer, you don't have to worry about that. You get a nice, clean, crisp image every time. To stamp with clear stamps, either this kind or this kind, you have to use an acrylic block. And this one's a really big one, but you can get smaller ones too. These are the Tim Holtz ones. They're also really thin, but you can get ones that are thicker as well. So you peel off from the sheet, just like you would a cling stamp, and put it on here, and then you can stamp. The awesome thing about clear stamps, whether they're the acrylic kind or whether they're the photopolymer kind, is that you can see through them to your paper. So if you want it on a specific spot on your paper, you can do that because you can see through these. So that's why I like clear stamps, because you get exact placement. Also, like on this set, there's these little animals, but it also comes with these little hats. Because you can see exactly where you're going to put it, like if I stamped this little penguin and then wanted to put this little stocking hat on top of him, because I can see exactly where I want to put it, then it'll, it'll be right where I want it to be, which is also nice. Also with a lot of paper tray ink sets, there's like two-step stamping where there's like an outline of an image and then another stamp is the inside of that image. You can stamp the outline and then be able to see through the stamp to see exactly where the inside of that image needs to go. So Molly Tigger, I hope I helped answer some of your questions a little better. And if, and if you want more of an explanation, I'd, I'd be more than happy to, to do another video if you'd like. These are just kind of what I have on hand right now. So that was that. So I, I showed the stamps. I showed my haul for people that wanted to see more hauls. And then uh, I answered Molly Tigger's question about different kind of stamps. And, and Molly Tigger, if you do have more questions, I will answer them. Just let me know. And then Pat from Pat's Treasures and Crafts. Hi, Pat. She uh, wanted me to talk a little bit more about my swap and rack etiquette video from last week. And um, I'm glad you kind of brought that up, Pat, because I think there was a little bit of misunderstanding maybe over that video. I was packaging a rack and a rack is a random act of kindness and you know it doesn't really matter what you put in a rack as long as you know your heart's in the right place and you just want to make someone's day. There aren't really rules with a rack per se. Like I've sent racks that are just like little stamps like this and then a and then a handmade card. And sometimes not even a handmade card. Sometimes I just pull out one of my little pre-made Hello Kitty cards from the dollar spot and uh, and send that cuz I just I just want people to know that I'm thinking about them. So racks can be little, racks can be big, racks can be um, you know, a homemade something and uh, let me let me get you guys something to look at. <laughs> so, um, you know, racks can be, you know, whatever you want them to be. My, the point of that video was, you know, racks can be whatever you want it to be, but, uh, you know, you need to make sure that it's just not a tangled mess inside your envelope. I guess that's what I was trying to say about racks. Now, about swaps, which was another part of that video kind of when you are doing a swap the person in charge of the swap is going to give you rules to follow and if you're gonna sign up for a swap then you need to follow the rules so like if you're in a card swap and it says make five cards the same or as close to the same as you can get then you actually need to make five cards you can't just make three cards and 
and say, oh, well, and send them in. You have to follow the rules and make the five cards. Or if you're doing a supply swap and it says that two of the things in the swap need to be brand new and in their new packaging, then two of your things need to be brand new and in the brand new packaging. Um, as far as swaps go, you have to follow the rules. Racks are different because most of the time it's a surprise. But, um, but swaps, you have to follow the rules. One of the things in Pat's comment was um, if, you, if you do a swap, do you need to send extra goodies? And do people get mad if you don't send extra goodies? Uh, in the swaps I've been in, I've always sent a couple extra things just because that's what I do and you don't have to. My thought on that is is if you follow all the rules like if you're in a supply shop and it says send five things two of them need to be in the original packaging brand new and one thing needs to be handmade then you need to follow that and then the other two things can be your choice. You know make something handmade get two new things for your person which can be it from your stash if you know you have things brand new in the packaging at your house that you're not using and you uh, know you won't use it then do it uh, the swap or the the rack that I packaged on camera I didn't buy anything new for that it was all things that I had that I just knew I wasn't going to use so to just keep that in mind too as long as if you're in a swap and as long as you follow the rules then that that is a great package if you want to put extra things in, that's great. When I participate in a swap, I never, I never expect for there to be extra things in there. That's up to that person. So Pat, if you have any more questions or would like a more in-depth thing on that, I might send you a PM or you know give me some more questions. But I'm I'm happy to talk with you on that as well as other people too because I know other people had question more questions on that so I'd be happy to do another video um, probably when I get back home and I'm not out of town anymore so I can show again swaps are different than racks make sure you follow the swap rules racks can be any size can be homemade you know it's just you know a surprise from the goodness of your heart so anyway I hope Pat that that uh, helped answer some of your questions. I've never had an angry swap partner and uh, I have gotten swaps that I have been disappointed in just because you know they were supposed to do things that they didn't do. It wasn't extra things like they flaked out on what they were really supposed to do. So anyway thank you guys for watching my Girl Talk Crafty Talk Friday video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!